So, well, uh, Niger, is this your last service? It is. So uh, pray for Niger. She's moving down to uh, Virginia Beach area, right? And uh, so I know uh, you're like, well, I don't know her. She's just kind of quiet and and uh, had some sickness there for a while. But it's good to good to have have you there. We te we've been texting and and uh, so she loves the Lord. Just pray for God's blessing and best on her life. Amen. God bless you. All right. Um, well, we sure love a brother. Siddler. Like I said, it's, he's not like one of our missionaries. He's just part of our family that gets to come home once in a while. And uh, we sure love uh, Steve. And probably of all our missionaries, he's our favorite. <laughs> Don't tell the others. <coughs> and, um, and Sarah's here. His wife is somewhere. Okay. Noemi's over there. And and, uh, and probably of all S Steve's kids, Sarah's my favorite. <laughs> but don't tell the others, okay? And, oh, okay. And um, so uh, his son just, uh, today's his first day as a Maryland State Trooper, so he was able to come home for that, and so we're grateful. Uh, but uh, I believe we've supported you all 25 years, and I'm glad, very glad that we could be part of that ministry hundreds and hundreds of people have been saved in Dominican Republic and uh, and we've been there for some of that so praise the Lord for it and Lord will we'll be back there again uh, whenever he's ready to have us amen so uh, I'm not sure I didn't even realize how sick Steve was but he was nigh unto death and um, and the Lord spared him and, and praise the Lord for that and and uh, we're grateful that he's feeling better. He's he's really kind of getting back. He said he's full full speed ahead, but I don't I don't think so because um, he's pretty skinny. He lost like 40, 50 pounds. Forty. Forty pounds. So uh, so he's looking for that cheesecake. He, we said we had the vegetables out there. He said I don't want no vegetables. I want cheesecake. You know. So. <laughs> Amen. He'll get it back. Amen. So uh, I was thinking about Brother Sidler and his family, but Brother Sidler uh, and I were saved about, we're about the same age. He's a little bit younger. A little bit. Quite so bit not even enough to even notice, okay? But we're about the same age. We got saved about the same time. Uh, we were saved and in the same home church. Uh, we uh, have the same pastor, Dr. Creed, um, and you think about there's so many things. We went to college. We went to college almost together. Uh, went to independent, and then we both went to Hiles Anderson. And so, um, it's been uh, you know, God God's given us a special friendship Amen. through the years, and and uh, He's always loved the Lord, and and um, you know, so we've always talked about the things of the Lord together. Uh, but obviously, I am more blessed than he is. You know why? Because he gets me as a friend. <laughs> but I get him. And so obviously, I'm more blessed than he is because I get him as a friend. And um, I sure love him. Uh, there's only one Steve Sittler. Amen. Right, Sarah? She's got, well, I have other stories. She, she, she said, I've heard it both ways. So, but, uh, so he's going to come and preach. And um, just have your hearts and your Bibles ready and uh, let the Lord have his way. So. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Love you. Love you too, brother. Amen. It's great to be here. Let's open in our Bibles this morning to Second Chronicles chapter number 7. Second Chronicles chapter number 7. Today and and then came out, they pumped me full of medicine and IV and, and said I just had a virus or something. And then the next day I was running 105 fever and went back and they finally found out what it was and praise the Lord. Uh, but God's blessing there. Um, the folks are, uh, we've had a few uh, get the coronavirus and uh, nobody died in our church or anything, but... We appreciate your faithful prayers and your support there through the years. Second Chronicles chapter number 7. Segunda de Crónica capítulo 7. 
La hermana no tuvo que interrumpir en esa parte, ¿verdad? She didn't have to translate that part. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 7. Do y'all usually stay seated or stand? What do y'all do for the scripture? What do y'all usually do? Seated? Okay. Amen. Second Chronicles 7, verses 1 to 2. I'll go ahead and read and you can look along with me. It says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. You know, when, when God's glory fills the house, there's not room for anything else. There's not room, of course, for pride. Amen. Not room for envy, jealousy, covetousness, uh, uh, or, or, or whatever. Uh, and we should want God to fill the, or the short American style title, Glory in the House. My cousin Paul Arcan helped me get that title because I always have this real, real long, you know, if, if you give your name in English, Steve Sidler. In Spanish, Jose Esteban Sidler Jr. de Lorenzo. And, and so my Spanish title translated into English is when the glory of the Lord fills the house. But that's hard to write on those CDs, you know, in, uh, in different churches. So uh, glory in the house. You can, if, if, if you're putting a title on this in the PA uh, system room in the back, you can put glory in the house. Or the real title is when the glory of the Lord fills the house. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this church, for the friendship of Pastor Conner and Miss Lori and Miss Smith and all the, their family. And thank you, Lord, for what you've done here. Thank you for filling this place with your glory. And we pray that we would see many, many, many more days, just con a continual presence of yours with us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. It wasn't the glory of Solomon that filled the temple here. It wasn't the glory of his famous and well-loved father David that filled the temple. It wasn't the great prayer that Solomon offered up to fill the temple. Uh, I'm not really eloquent in Spanish or English. I have a hard time preaching in English because I hardly ever do it. But probably the people in Spanish probably think, well, he probably does a lot better job in English, you know, when he <laughs> preaches. Uh, and, but really, I've heard people pray before, and boy, you feel like they're going to part the Red Sea when they pray. Uh, and I, 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 uh, I, my voice sounds funny when I listen to it on tape. You ever listen to yourself on a tape recorder? And I can understand how somebody would come hear me preach one time, but uh, twice? Oh, boy. Uh, but uh, it's not my eloquent prayer, or it wasn't Solomon. Boy, he, he, could, he could pray. Uh, nor will the glory of God fill our church because of our great and eloquent prayers, right. nor because of our great preaching. Uh, God's, not, God's glory is not going to fall. Hey, listen, I'm, I, I don't recognize the name of the guy you're having for your revival, but God isn't going to fill this church because of him. And I don't want to say that out of any disrespect. We want God's glory to fill the church. Amen. It's not a famous preacher. Uh, because of him that God's glory is going to fall here. It's not because of our titles or our degrees. It's not because of all the fundamental churches that we, Independent Baptist Church, have very little to do with it. We sure, and we sure do need and we should want the glory of God to fill this church. We sure, should, sure do need and sure should want God's glory to fill churches all over the United States, all over the Dominican Republic, and all over the world. Now, uh, I was, was thinking about preaching, praying about preaching what happens when God's glory falls, and, but I'm gonna, we're going to talk about what happened before God's glory fell. And I'm, Dr. Creed said he doesn't like to preach how, how you do this and how you do that because he says, I really don't know. I just try my best to, to do what God says and, and God decides to bless and uh, I don't have some special uh, secret on, on, on how God's glory can fall here. We can just look and see what God did. Amen? Amen. But if the glory of the Lord is going to fill our churches, first of all, it is God's blessing alone that is going to have to fill our churches. Right. 
It is God's blessing alone that is going to have to fill them. If you look in chapter 6 and verse number 3, it says, And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation. And then, I know Brother Rich is going to feel bad. He's not in here. I'm talking about him. Maybe give him a copy of this. We'll talk about it. When, when, when Solomon said, And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And Rich was not there with a great big plastic bag and handing out candy bars. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Now that would be a good thing. I think God's glory would fall here if you gave out some Heath bars and Butterfingers. Amen! Boy, I'm, I need to finish preaching to get one of those candy bars. Uh, no, uh, he was talking about God's blessing. And we also, verse 4, we should bless God as well. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that, that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, uh, you, you teenage boys, uh, brother, what happened on that real nice looking group you used to have? The, the nice looking boys. They're not here anymore? Uh, you boys, God can even bless you. Amen! He can even bless you. The girls, right there, they're putting their handkerchiefs in the air and saying, yeah, I don't know how, but I guess he can bless them. No, uh, God wants to bless us. Amen? In, in number 6, verses 24 to 26, the Bible says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Uh, God's blessings have never come from man, from a place, from a good message, uh, uh, nor from, uh, fr from a great place. They come from God alone. Amen. I got saved in March of 1982, started pastor in 1988, and, uh, but uh, all, 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 all these years, God has decided to bless my life. Sometimes I don't realize he's blessing. Sometimes we just concentrate on the negative. Amen. Uh, but God gave me an opportunity to go in 1982 to a youth conference in Hammond, Indiana. And I went. Brother Nichols was a youth pastor. And I was sitting in the mezzanine. And Dr. Hiles was preaching a message. And in the middle of the message, all of a sudden I heard, <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? A guy was crying. And then somebody else started crying, making some other weird noise on another side of the auditorium. And somebody else, and, and I started hearing people shout, Hallelujah, Glory to God. And you know it, Independent. There were different times. One time I was having a hard time staying awake when we were in the gymnasium. And we, we uh, didn't have that good air condition anymore. And I prayed. I said, God, I don't know what my problem is. I'm falling asleep. And the Holy Spirit like, spoke to my heart. Well, when you agree with what Dr. Creed says, Amen. And Dr. Creed got going on again and and I, he said something else I agree with. I said, Amen! And Ralph Dalton looked over again. And then Dr. Creed got preaching a little bit more, and I, and I was getting ready to say Amen, and, 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 and Ralph Dalton said, Glory to God! And I said, Amen! And then, and, and then uh, he, he said something else I, I, I liked, and before I said Amen, he said, Glory to God! I said, Amen! And, and Brother Maggio said, Glory to God! Yeah. You know, he said, glory to God, Brother Maggio used to say. It, and sometimes it was really quiet, sometimes a little more noisy. And that happened at First Baptist. And there was some different, a different style of preaching. And I'd heard him on tape preach and everything. But, my, but the reason I mentioned that, we were coming home, a 13-hour drive after the youth conference. And Brother Nichols looked at me one time. He let me drive the van. He looked over at me and said, so, Steve, what do you think? I think about what? He said, what do you think about Jack Kyle's preaching? Look good, huh? I said, it was all right. He said, what do you mean? I said, it was all right. He said, not as good as, as Pastor Creed's. He said, really? I said, yeah. He, he can't preach as good as Pastor Creed, but it was all right. And he said... Well, I guess it isn't the way you say something, but what you say. Now, I think he preached good. Amen? Jack, Jack Howells preached good, but I like the way Dr. Creed preached because that was the place where God's glory was filling. Amen? 
he was filling Independent Baptist Church. When, when we start thinking about Dr. Creed, for instance, it was never Dr. Creed. It was God's blessing. Amen? It was never Jack Hiles. It was God's blessing. It was never Steve Sidler. Amen? It was never Rick Connors. It was, it's always been God. Uh, when I got to the Dominican, we would go first. When we were getting ready to go, we would go around and visit churches uh, because I was on deputation the same time he became director. And he would go and tell, tell the church. I would be there as one of the missionaries, and he was the, was the conference speaker. He said, Steve already speaks Spanish, and his wife is Latino. They're going to an all-Spanish-speaking country. Probably in a year or two, they'll have 100, 200 people. And I thought that too, because everybody, we used to have to go looking for Spanish people. There are a lot of Spanish people in Clinton now, but there didn't used to be. We would have Garcia Sunday. You say, what's Garcia Sunday? We would get the telephone book out, and we, you don't have that today. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we, we'd visit Gonzalez during the week, but now they're everywhere. But when we came, when we went to the Dominican, we had a high service of around 30. Dr. Creek came to preach for us. And we had that day two, two kids, a seven-year-old boy, a four-year-old girl. Noemi was sick with Michael's pregnancy, didn't come. And uh, Angela just stayed home with her she, because she was going to babysit her anyway. So that day it was Dr. Creek, Mrs. Creed, a seven-year-old boy, four-year-old girl, me. Dr. Creed said, Steve, why don't you preach? He said, I'm not good with kids. And I felt like a failure. My preacher was there. We invited a bunch of people, handed out flyers, giving out some prizes for bringing visitors. He said, Steve, of course, walk with the Lord, read your Bible, pray, love your wife, so when. He said, but you need to learn to preach. And he wasn't saying, I probably did, didn't preach very good, but... He wasn't saying I didn't preach good, but what, what he was saying, learn to realize that God is going to bless and work in that church through the preaching of his word. He said, you're not going to see a church built here because you preach like me, because you preach like Lee Robertson, because you preach like Jack Hiles. And I've had people that uh, sometimes they'll criticize different ones and and you can tell when you get up in their pulpit, they're anticipating something, a certain style. I am not here to entertain you. I don't want anybody to leave thinking, that's the most boring message I've ever heard in my life. I hope that doesn't happen either. Amen. Uh, but I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to preach God's word. Amen. I want God to bless you. And uh, I have tried to be faithful. God bless the people. And I don't know about you, Pastor Connor, I've said this here before. I look at it, our people and see precious saints of the Lord. Most of them, most of them, I, uh, uh, I won to the Lord or somebody in our church won to the Lord. Uh, but they're at our church and I didn't make any of them. I didn't make these wonderful Christians. God did it. Amen. Amen. If, if God's glory is going to fill this church, uh, then... then uh, he's the one that needs to bless us. Amen. They, uh, Solomon said, may, uh, may the Lord bless you. And we want God to bless you. We all want God to bless our lives today. Amen. I talked about the altar in Sunday school. And I talked about uh, uh, the, 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 sometimes dad will use the altar, but none of the kids use the altar. I used to say, Jack Howells used to say, and a lot of times we repeat stuff that other preachers say, uh, uh, and Elmer Fernandez, who was a Spanish pastor there, un cubano que bien altote, verdad que hablaba que que uh, he 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 used to say this too. He said if, he he said if God speaks to the deacon's heart during the message, the deacon ought to use the altar. If God speaks to the bus driver's heart during the message, the bus driver ought to use the altar. If God speaks uh, to, to to the guy that leads the singing's heart. Amen, Brother Mike? Uh, you, you, ought, you ought to use the altar. Amen. And, and, and so I would say that too. And, and I would say, if God speaks to the missionary's heart, he ought to use the altar. If God speaks to the missionary's wife's heart, Noemi's heard that many times. And, and, and Noemi might think, is he hit, hitting me up? Yes and no. Yeah, if uh, Cinderella, if the shoe fits, it's your. Amen. If God speaks to our hearts, you ought to use the altar. I've had missionaries there before. They got mad at me because I said that. 
You said, well, you're attacking me. Well, shouldn't you want to use the altar anyway? You said, well, they might think that, that you know something private about me. I, I guarantee you, probably everybody already knows. Everybody already knows if you have a stinky attitude. Amen. Yeah. Everybody already knows if you have something going on in your life. Man, and if they don't, amen, praise the Lord. But we want God to bless us. Yeah. Amen. We want God to bless us. And teenagers, uh, this is not your mom and dad's church. It's not your mom and dad's religion. It's yours too. Amen. Man, God, uh, if your dad uses the altar all the time, it's not because he's, he's just real emotional and I don't know, he's trying to prove a point. I, you know what it is, is he wants God to bless him during the message. And he, he, he may be saying, thank you, Lord. Work, work in my life. This, I don't know how many times, not many. What's, what's going on? Amen. We want God to bless us. Amen. If God's glory is going to fill Patuxent Baptist Church, then it's only going to come from his blessing. If the glory of God is going to fill our churches also, it is the fulfillment of God's promises that is going to have to fill our churches. Amen. The fulfillment of God's promises. Look in verse 4 again. It says, And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth by my father David, saying. Folks, uh, God is the one that I trust. I'm in the Dominican Republic because of God's promises. Amen? I'm there because of that. Brother Connor, I, it could happen today that I could say something that really could make Brother Connor mad. And they drop my support. And amen. I'm not in the Dominican Republic of Brother Connor. Now, Brother Connor is absolute. I, I count on, my hand, on, on, on one hand my best friends. And he's one of them. You know when you were little, you ever get mad because somebody else was playing with your friend? He's my best friend. Uh, Brother Connors, he may be my best or he's absolutely one of my best. It, did that increase my offering a little bit today? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I, I, love, I love Pastor Connor. Amen. Uh, but I'm not in the Dominican Republic because of the promise that Patuxent Baptist Church made me. I'm not in Dominican Republic because uh, of some promises on top. No. I really try to do what I do. That's why it's important to have, a, uh, have the right Bible. Amen. Amen. God preserved His Word. In the Spanish-speaking world, there are people going around saying that Spanish do not have the Bible in their language. And there's a guy named Humberto Gomez, and I'm going to say it in the pulpit, that, uh, that, that is not a linguist. He's not a linguist. They've taken and changed about 150 verses, and now he put he has a Bible he prints says Reina Valera Humberto Gomez. Well, well, praise the Lord for Humberto Gomez. God was not able to preserve His world for His word for the last 500 years, and now He came along and fixed it, and now they have the right Bible. And there are people even that say that you're not even saved if you weren't saved with that Bible. What a bunch of garbage! Bunch of garbage. I, God has worked. In the Spanish-speaking world, we, we, uh, the Spanish folks are really open to the gospel, and they have a good Bible. Amen? Amen. The Bible that's translated uh, 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 from the Greek and Hebrew and preserved the right Bible. I'm saying that because most of the people that follow that hogwash are people that don't speak Spanish, and I've had people come and say, well, the Bible says this, and... and and I don't say it in pride. I, I'm not a linguist in Spanish either. But I've told people, brother, with all due respect, I speak Spanish better than what you speak. And what you're saying that that says, it's not saying. Amen? I'm bringing that up because we need to make sure that we have a every word Bible. Amen? From Genesis to Revelation, that the Bible is the word of God. Uh, 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 the devil said to Eve, you, you, you won't die. I, mean, I can say it better in Spanish now than English. I mean, uh, that, is that how they said it in English? What does the King James say? Thou shalt not die. Thou shalt not die. Folks, uh, God, if, he's going to, if His glory is going to fill our church, we need to trust in the promises of His Word. Young men, 
you can trust God. God can give you a beautiful family. God can give you a beautiful life. Your, your, God's, uh, God's blessings do not depend uh, uh, upon uh, good, the good friends you have, what, the, what they're going to take care of you, they're going to give you a good love offering, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, the other. No, uh, God is going to fulfill the promises of his word to take, to take care of you if you'll do whatever he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Thirdly this morning, thirdly this morning, if the glory of God is going to fill our churches, we must pray that God would fill our churches, churches with people who are willing to start churches wherever God would have them started. Amen? We need to pray that God would, would fill our churches with people who are willing to start churches wherever God would have them started. And verse number six says, but I have chosen what? I have chosen what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem that my name might be there and have, chosen, uh, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. God chose Pastor Connor to be here in this area. And when Pastor, Pastor Connor tells a story, and I'm not trying to, I, I don't know if I know it uh, uh, very, very good, but Pastor Connor, I've heard him tell the story about how he came down to this area of Dr. Creed and there was nothing compared to what there is today when he came down into this area. And Dr. Creed said, yeah. Didn't he say it's going to take about 15 years before you get, get a little group? And he said, you'll have, you'll have a different congregation. And I remember preaching when, when we had the Spanish ministry out of Independent. Pastor Connor had me preach a few times. And I remember, Miss Lori, the day when we all were up in the liquor store up there uh, buying, I don't know what you were buying there. Uh, no, y'all were up at a liquor store where you had your church. Uh, and I remember Brother Connor was almost uh, uh, crying, wondering if anybody was going to come to come to service other than me annoy me that day. Well, God blessed. Amen. Brother Connor was faithful. He was willing to be in the area that nobody else would come to. And now your church is known in this area and all over the the Maryland area to be one of the strongest. Now, no, no, no. some of you look, what? Yes. You're a very good church. And, and, and let me tell you, you're not a good church because of this, but I love preaching here. I have a good time. Amen. Miss, Miss Lori said that's because uh, they, you know, Pastor Connor usually preaches, and so when you come, and when he's not preaching, you have you got Brother Rich and Brother Rich, Brother Thales, and so uh, when you come, you got got something. No, I'm just just kidding. Uh, but God chose to start a church here. When we went, when we drove by the corner where our church is years ago, Keith the Swaniel, the street was so bad where our church is, my van almost tipped over. You ever talk to yourself out loud? That day, I talked to myself out loud for some reason. And I said, what an ugly place. Who? Well, God has a sense of humor. Two and a half months later, we founded the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Looking to put churches in an area like, uh, like this area, in an area like Keith the Swaniel, all over the world, where he can fill that church with his glory. Amen. If God's glory is going to fill our church, we need to pray that God would fill our churches with people who would be willing to start churches wherever God would want them started. Listen, folks, unfortunately, some of you, God doesn't want you to stay here. He wants you to go somewhere else. You know, in the time we've been in Dominican, and I've told you this before, I think it's up to 30. It may be more like 50 or 30 independent Baptist missionary families that have come and gone. A friend of mine named Jose Aguero said, I like missionaries. He said, but most missionaries make me sick. He said, most missionaries come. You, you, you know, to raise support to go to Dominican Republic or Spain or Canada, wherever, to get your support, get set up on the field, yeah. and be there four years, and some people not even four years are able to spend it before, it probably takes about $200,000. $200,000. And 30 missionary families have come to Dominican 
and have left already. Some of them, their kids got older, and, <laughs> and I can't stand the fact that Sarah's not going to be with us. But God didn't call us to the Dominican. When God called us to the Dominican, Sarah wasn't even in the picture. Amen. Yeah. And she's not going to be in the picture again. She'll, and I don't know what God has for her life. She may come back to the Dominican with a, with a missionary husband. Amen. Hook you a man that wants to come to the Dominican Republic. And we'll help you. Uh, but uh, God, uh, uh, God has filled uh, our lives with His blessing. Amen. With His glory. Uh, he put us in the place where He wants us. And wherever th that place is that God has for you, you ought to do it. Amen. Not when it's popular. It's easy when everybody... Oh, oh, oh. When we were in the Dominican, there were I, I can name families that were there and you would know their names, some of them. Not there anymore. Most of them because of sin. Some of them are divorced. And praise the Lord, God forgives. My, I have my mom and my second stepfather, my dad and my first stepmother, and I have my first stepfather and my second stepmother. That's kind of confusing, but you get a lot more presents at Christmas time. Amen. <laughs> and so I come from a broken home, uh, and God forgives, but, but the fa families who, who have left, God wants you to have a wonderful life in His will. We probably get to see our family more than we would if we lived here in the States. We've been to Disney World. We've been to the Grand Canyon. We've been to different islands. We have a church in Italy that supports us. I want to go to Italy. Amen. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. God has, has filled our lives and our church in the Dominican Republic with His glory. Amen. But if He's going to fill it with His glory, there need to be other people that are willing to go where God would have them go. I, I, I like a song in Spanish. Cristo, Cristo está buscando obreros hoy que quieren ir con él. Jesus is looking for workers that are willing to go where he would have them. I'm not singing it right. <laughs> uh, uh, there's so much work to do and, 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 and there's a lack of laborers. If God is going to fill churches with, uh, with his glory, we need some churches to, to fill them with. Amen. We need some churches. To, and so in this church, that that's going to continue to happen. He said, I've been in churches. They love missions. They're givers. Have great music. Just uh, walk with the Lord. Any, anything that you would expect that a good church would have, would have, they have them. But nobody's called out of the church to pastor. Nobody's called to be a missionary. He said, I can't. And, and then you get a church that they're a little on the do -do 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 -do, a little weird. Remember James Hodges? He used to, we saw him at Denny's one day. We were eating. And he said, Dana, Steve. He said, this is weird. And so Dr. Green said, there's some weird churches. And for whatever reason, God has decided to bless them. You, you, would you think maybe God's blessing them because there's some people that will say, I'll go. I'll go. God, whatever you want me to do, God's not going to bless us uh, because as we said in the beginning, because we pray good, we preach good, we look good, uh, but just people that are willing, amen, to go wherever God would have them go. If the glory of God, fourthly, is going to fill our churches, we need to beg the Lord to fill our churches. Republic. God chose Lee Bowman to be in Manatee in West Virginia. God chose Henry Ward to be in Japan. Amen. God chose Rick Connors to be down here. What is this called? Y'all confuse me all the time, y'all. St. Mary's, Mary's County. Amen. Uh, Hollywood, Maryland, Lexington Park. Uh, uh, God, uh, and, and maybe God has a place for you. Amen. I'm sure he does. But are you willing to go? And if the glory of God is going to fill our churches, we need to pray with his glory. We need to pray that, that he would fill our churches with people who want to help start these churches all over the world. In verse 7 it says, Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. That was in his heart. It wasn't something in, the, uh, in another man of God's heart and, and he kind of twisted David's arm. and that's, This is what David wanted to do. In, the, in Clinton, at Independent Baptist Church, 
Pastor Connor can tell you when he got saved and went there, when I got saved and went there, very quickly we heard about missions. We heard about the need for, for the gospel all over the world. At that time, there were around 10 buses. I'm not trying to exaggerate. There, I think there were about 10 buses that would go all over the area. Pastor Connor and Brother Carlton White, Brother Allen, were, were, worked a route on Brandywine Road. Uh, at, at one time, uh, uh, Brother Connor wasn't, uh, uh, I think it's when you went to Hiles Anderson, uh, he wasn't the captain anymore. They asked me to be the captain, and I was 17 years old, but I, I became the captain. But at, at Independent, uh, my, my point is, uh, we were just being influenced by our pastor that he wanted to see churches start all over the world. And that was the atmosphere in our church. We were excited about it. We had missionaries that would pop in on us that uh, Pastor Creed didn't know very well. Whatever, he would get up on a pulpit. I want to recommend we take on Brother Jones for support. Who, who seconds the motion? We would take missionaries on for support, uh, left and right. And still, so many missionaries many times leave the field, unfortunately, that sometimes if you take a missionary on once a month still, you had less missionaries at the end of the year than you did in the beginning. Isn't that sad? Uh, but uh, in, in our church, we wanted to see how the churches started. Dr. Cree would take up special offerings for missions projects, for buying land, for building buildings. And uh, the, the, the same y'all have done. I was trying to figure out some of my finances and I saw one time I wrote a, I was looking at some old emails and I said, Patuxent said that they sent uh, a thousand, another thousand dollars. Brother Sprunger, where is it? I want to know where it was. Uh, 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 well, uh, that money was sent for our, our, our building or our bus, something, uh, one of those two, two items. I don't remember what it was, but we need that. Amen. One of our jobs as, uh, as a missionary is to get churches started, get them a building up, uh, get them chairs and Bibles and PA system and, uh, where they can, take care, they can take, take care of their pastor and then start another one and start another one and start another one. We don't go and say, okay, you want to have a Chick-fil-A? Build your own building. Hmm? Buy all your own tables and buy, uh, uh, furnish your, all, 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 this, uh, all your own stuff. They understand that that's not done that way and there's so many hard-nosed people as a blesser. Amen? And I'm not, I was teasing about, uh, about Pastor Connor up in my offer and whatever. Y'all spoiled us and, and have sacrificed so much through, through the years. But every time God does something there in the Dominican... Y'all are able to say, thank you, Lord, Amen. for allowing us to be a part of that. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege to be able to, uh, to see God's glory fall into place. If the glory of God is going to fill our churches, we also need to help fill the hearts of our children with God's plan of planting churches all over the world. Verse 9 says, Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. Brother, you were asking about the church. There's a picture out in the foyer there of y'all's church you're building. Amen. That's what y'all want it to look like, right? A picture out there. By the time, Brother Connor, y'all get your building up and everything's ready, you may have already went on to heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm not, I'm not trying to be dramatic or scare anybody, but folks, we're not going to be here forever. Amen. Brother, you're not going to be here forever. You kids are going to be here longer than us. Who's going to carry it on? Is this church still going to be known as the type of church it is? I don't know if you realize what a wonderful, wonderful church you have. I don't know if you realize what a wonderful man of God that God has put here. Amen? And uh, uh, boys and girls, God wants to do something in your life. Michael, what, what I like about him, you know what I like about him being in the Maryland State Troopers? He told me, Daddy, if God tells me today that I need to be a missionary or I, I need to be a pastor, he said, I'll give it all up and go. He's not being a trooper because he wants to be a state trooper. The best he understands, that's what God wants him to do right now. And 
God, we need good troopers. Maryland State Troopers, amen? We need good people to move that line along in Dollar Tree. The line is too long. We need good cashiers at the Dollar Tree. We need, we need good, good Christians everywhere, amen? But uh, young men and young ladies, boys and girls, uh, you need to catch the vision too. You need to do something for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. If God's glory is going to fill this place, uh, you know, it may just be at, in, at Independent, years ago, Pastor Creed used to talk about look for somebody that's, that looks lonely, they look sad, they look bored or whatever, and walk up to them and shake their hands. So I, I would walk around and shake people's hands and, and a lot of the adults... They would come in the first thing. They would sit down. Said, I don't like this place. Ain't nobody friendly here. Nobody ever talks to, you, to me. And you don't ever talk to anybody either. Man, be friendly. You know when I feel like that? Mostly when I'm at a preacher's conference somewhere. Because preachers hate to get, make eye contact with the missionary. They think you're going to hit you up for support, I guess. Amen. You go to a preacher's meeting somewhere... And I usually think preachers are not very friendly. And finally, sometimes I get, I've get i gotten bored during a break time and I'll walk around and start introducing myself. And that preacher looks real mean and ugly. He's a real nice guy. Amen. Real nice guy. And folks, there are some folks that, 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 that are a lot nicer than, than you think. But as a young man, I learn we need to be friendly. Young people, uh, you need to be friendly. Amen. You can serve the Lord. You can do right. God can use you, and He wants to use you. Amen. God doesn't use somebody because they're old. He, he uses us because we're willing. If the glory of the Lord is going to fill our churches also, our churches should be filled with people who use the altar. Our church should be filled with people who use the altar. We talked about the altar in Sunday school today. But look in verse, verses 12 and 13, talking about Solomon, it says, And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and he spread forth his hands. Solomon was not ashamed to be close to the altar. Solomon was not ashamed for all of Israel to see him at the altar. And it was at the altar where we see in chapter 7, in, in, in verse 1, uh, 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 now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. God's glory filled the house, but you saw it there at the altar. Amen. Uh, use the altar, folks. You ought, you ought to pray that God will speak to your heart at church. You're not at church to be entertained. I don't know if you've heard people, Pastor Connor, talk about, you know, you ought to preach this way, you ought to preach that way, and so and so. All they do is tell a bunch of stories, whatever. Well, Jesus told a bunch of stories, amen. I don't know uh, if, if, if my preaching matches up. Uh, the certain style somebody wants, but I do my best to preach the Bible. Amen. Want to preach and expound the Word of God, make it uh, e easy to understand. But when, uh, uh, but when I preach, I pray that people will make a decision at the altar. Amen. And uh, uh, and if if God's glory is going to fill our churches, I believe we should use the altar. And lastly, this morning. If the glory of the Lord is going to fill our churches, our churches must be filled with people who pray. Our churches must be filled with people who pray. All of the other seven points, I uh, took them out of one verse, maybe two. And all the, other, all the other points could be explained in just one or two verses. But now prayer is explained in verse 19 all the way to chapter 7, verse 1. 38 verses to talk about prayer. Now, we're not, I don't have 38 points. I'm not going to say a, a, a lot about it. And I don't think that one person is a better Christian because they pray six hours every day and somebody else prays a half hour every day. Our problem is many times, times we just don't pray. Amen? We don't pray. Some of us eat. 
three or four times a day, but if you take and add it all up, it doesn't, doesn't even make a half hour, but you can tell we're eating good. Amen. You know, about looking at our belly, right? Uh, but we need to pray. If God's glory is going to fall, we need to pray. Solomon was praying when God's glory fell. Uh, I, don't, I know Miss, uh, Mrs. Smith knows the Cox family, Bert and Barbara Jo Cox. When I went to Independent, they were there. They loved on us. Uh, they were one of the families that Brother Dove used to have to cut the lights off in the auditorium to get people to leave, go home, because there was always somebody in charge of locking up, and uh, the Elgins never wanted to leave. Uh, Barbara Joe and Burke Cox. Well, when I was a teenager, I started working at Joe's El Rancho restaurant, washing dishes, peeling potatoes, making onion rings at 15 years old. And my hair was all the way down my back. I usually was drugged up every day from 11 years old to 17 years old. I smoked marijuana and drank alcohol every day, every day, every day. I always had some whiskey hidden there at Joe's. When he would leave, I would change the radio. He always would have WMZQ. And I knew all those country songs by heart uh, because of that. And when he would leave, I would change it to a rock and roll uh, station. And, and I would be high or drunk every day at work. If I wasn't already, I did it. Went, went and hid out in one of the closets real quick and took some drugs. And, and so I would come partying. Every, every penny I made went to drugs. And Barbara Jo and Burke Cox came in. And Barbara Jo said, she said many times, I saw you. And she said, I started praying for you. And I, and I prayed for you for years. And even now, Barbara Jo prays for us in the Dominican Republic as we serve the Lord. Uh, Bar Barbara jo, Bar Brother Burke Cox went on to be with the Lord, I think, over 20 years ago. And, but Barbara Jo has prayed all these years. And she has a part in every glorious thing that God has done. She has a part if maybe God has blessed you in spite of my incapacity, in spite of my lack of talent or whatever. It, uh, we're not in competition with anybody, but if God's blessed you at all, part of that. He is because Barbara Joe has been praying for me for years. Amen. Amen. I guarantee you, Brother Alan Carlton is praying for you. I didn't know who you were, uh, but right away when Pastor Connor said, uh, Carlton went him to it. Carlton's talked to me three or four times already about you. Amen. And he's praying for you. Amen. Folks, if we want God's glory to fall, we need to pray for one another. As I was praying for Pastor Connor today, I wonder... If you were praying too. Brother Tullis sends me a message every Sunday morning and says, I'm praying for you. Praying for God to bless. And then I, I send him a message back. Brother, can I borrow $20? He's never let me borrow $20. But at least I know he's praying for me that God will give me $20. Amen. This morning, folks, I don't know about you. This isn't fake for me. God saved me. You remember our drug mentality we had? I don't know if it was my drug mentality when I got saved, but Dr. Creed used to shine when he preached. I told my sister, I said, Dr. Creed shines! It took me like six months to realize the reason he was shining. They had two special lights that shined on him when he was preaching. He would go in the baptistry to baptize and he would come out and I'll say, he doesn't even, doesn't even get wet! He goes back there with his suit and everything and baptizes. I didn't know he had these waiters that came up to here and he had another suit coat he put on and uh, boy, it, 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 was, it was so special. Church was so special. When, when, when Brother Mrs. Beard or Miss Fagan or Brother Mrs. Dove or Henry Ward would sing a special, it, it, it was God's glory falling, speaking to my heart. Maybe you just come and you put up with, with, with what's going on. Since I've been saved, I haven't had to put up with church. It, 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 God's glory has filled my soul. And, and, and sometimes the preaching is real good. Sometimes the preaching is okay. And sometimes it's pretty bad. Amen. But God's blessed anyway. Amen. His glory has filled this morning. God's glory wants to fill our church. Heavenly Father, thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that 
I know I didn't think I could get saved, but I know that you died for even me. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me. You changed my life and have filled my life and filled the churches that I've been in with your glory. And it's not because of anybody's talent, not because any title, not because somebody sang real good, not because somebody looked real good, but you decided, Lord, to fill our church. You decide to fill our lives. Lord, we, we want that for us too. I want to ask that you would bless our invitation today. Lord, if there's someone here that does not know you, does not know that when they die, they will go to heaven, we pray, Lord, that you would save that soul today with our heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. I wonder how many here, here today would say, Brother Siddler, I praise God that I know that if something were to happen to me today and I were to die, I praise the Lord that I know I'm going to heaven. I praise the Lord I know my sins are forgiven. I'm going to heaven. If you know that, would you uplift your hand in testimony of that? Amen. Amen. You can put your hand. I don't know that. I don't know that when I die I'm going to heaven. But I sure do want to know. I would love to get things right with God and know that my sins are forgiven and that I'm going to heaven but I don't know that yet. Would you pray for me, Brother Siddler? If you'd lift your hand up where you're sitting, I would love to pray for you. Is anybody like that? How many today would say, Brother Siddler, uh, I know I'm going to heaven, but I want that for our church, what you talked about today, having God's glory fill our church, having God's glory fill my home, having God's glory fill my heart and my life. God spoke to me about something in my heart and my life about our church today. Pray that God's glory would fall upon us. If, if you're like that this morning, would you uplift your hand? Amen. Amen. Let's everyone stand in an attitude of prayer. Lord.